Hello and welcome to another What Sold on eBay video. We're going to go over 22 items that sold over $100 mid-month of November 2020. So this is going to be from November 1st to November 15th. There's lots of great bolos in this video and we're going to go from the lowest to the highest and so you definitely want to stay tuned till the very end of the video to see what are the high, high, higher end items that we sold mid-month. Uh, once again, I'm Chris Thurshop Hustler. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please go down there and click the subscribe button. Let's get started. First up, we have this vintage Walt Disney Collectibles Classic Collection. Uh, these are three figures. This is from Cinderella, and these are mice, as you can see here. Uh, we talked about um, WDCC, Walt Disney Classic Collection, uh, before in different videos. As a matter of fact, I should probably do a Know Your Stuff video on this at some point. So um, definitely stay tuned for that. But anyways, these are little like ceramic figures and they do all kinds of them. Uh, there's some of them that are in the thousands of dollars, but they're like these huge intricate uh, pieces. So just keep an eye out for these. They always come in this green box, so you, cannot, you can never miss them, uh, as you can see here. And as a matter of fact, let's kind of scroll through here real quick and show you what these look like. Some of these break very easily. So just if you're going to buy these in a uh, state sale or a collection, Make sure you, you take a good look at them and to make sure they're not repaired or anything. I guess I don't have the the the, the logo of what these look like. But anyways, uh, the main thing is looking out for these green boxes. You cannot miss them. And they'll say, um, you know, Walt Disney a Classic Collection on them. Uh, these sold on auction for $103. And uh, individually, these things, uh, these mice would sell anywhere between, you know, $40 to $60 each. So it's kind of right in that uh, same little area. So definitely look out for this stuff uh, when you're out there and about. Uh, next up, we have this Harry Potter. This is a new sealed PlayStation 1 game. And just a, a heads up to anyone that finds any kind of vintage. It's kind of crazy to think that PlayStation is now getting into the vintage category. PlayStation 1, I should say. But anyways, look for any sealed stuff. Uh, there's a lot of collectors that are sending them off to get graded. And as a matter of fact, if you find a really rare title that's sealed and it's in good condition, I highly suggest sending it to get graded. It can it can probably 10 times the the value of the particular game. Um, we did take a best offer uh, for this one and it sold for $113. So uh, this was actually a really cool find. It came with a stack of other sealed PlayStation games. Uh, unfortunately, I probably would have sent it in to get um, graded if it didn't have a crack. Um, on the case, as you can see here, there's a crack on the case. This, and it was when I saw the crack, because the other games that came with this were kind of like sports games and they were pretty much worthless. But when I saw this game and looked it up, uh, and then I saw the crack on it, I was like, oh man, this thing would have graded pretty well. I would have probably cleaned up this residue here on the side. Uh, that could easily be cleaned up with a little bit of olive oil. And by the way, that's a pro tip if you have any sticky residue on plastics, um, you can use some olive oil and that stuff will get right off and it's non toxic. Uh, but anyways, this is a pretty good sale. Look out for PlayStation uh, games sealed, especially in the black. They call these black label cases with the black label. I can just go on and on. I'm just going to stop. <laughs> uh, next up is this really cool uh, cocktail menu. This is signed by Nat King Cole. Uh, I did my own kind of research on this, and I do a lot of authentication um, You know, when I'm doing stuff for our shops. Now, there's no certificate of authenticity. But I do do my initial research and, you know, every once in a while I find something that is completely off. Uh, but all the signs to me tell that this was a legitimate um, signature. But I will disclose in my auction every single time that's not authenticated. As a matter of fact, we should probably uh, look into making our own authentications at some point for, for our products like this. But anyways, um, really, really cool item. Very unique item. I think it was like a, it says it was like from the, la, the was it Lavanch, Lavanch? Uh, lock, lock and veer room. Anyways, from 1953, it's like a cocktail kind of menu. It's a folding thing. And it looks like, uh, le like luckily it was actually dated, but, um, a really cool piece. We try to get a lot more than uh, 119 for this, but that's what this sold for with, uh, sit on sale. So, uh, look out for signature stuff that's out there. Uh, next up we have the Saks Fifth Avenue. These are Brown cro Crocodile Men's Oxford. Uh, these are handmade, as you can see here, beautiful pieces of shoe <laughs> pieces of shoe that sounds weird uh really cool shoe as you can see some pretty high quality uh, soles and that's another thing too about shoes is, is you can just like take a look at them and know that they're uh, high quality alligator and crocodile is always going to sell well it's going to always sell in the hundreds of dollars so uh, keep, definitely keep it out i mean there is fake crocodile and there's fake alligator don't get me wrong but if you ever find any legitimate shoes 
uh, they go for a pretty good amount of money. Um, this sold for a total of $127. So uh, definitely keep an eye out for these. That was actually a pretty good uh, sale or buy it now for that. Uh, next up, we have this Prada Milano. This is a nylon jacket. And uh, we had this in the shop for over a year and just glad it finally sold. Uh, it's actually a really cool jacket. It's in really good condition. Has some kind of like, you know, a little bit of wear, but nothing completely ripped or torn or stains or anything like that. It's pretty good, pretty good jacket. Anyways, this sold for a total of $129 also. And so it was just good to see this kind of go. And you could tell it's like an older thing because we have uh, the, the mannequin. I, I rarely do mannequin stuff anymore because it just takes so much time. Uh, especially if it's not worth it. If, if we get a nice Chanel jacket in or something like that, I will definitely pull out the mannequin and do these photos. But uh, the days of doing photos for every single piece of clothing are, are long gone. It's easy just to do a lay and, fo and shoot or like hang it on a door or something like that. I know it's not as professional, but it's just like time is money. And uh, when you do this long enough, you realize that there's certain things that you, you did in the past that just wasn't worth it anymore. So this is kind of one of those situations. Uh, next up, we have this vintage. This is a Lency Sailor Dog. It's like kind of like a plush mohair uh, kind of animal figure thing here. Vintage, as you can see here, it has all its little pieces in its box. Um, this is definitely a bolo brand to look out for. Uh, you, it's, uh, it's, you really are rarely going to find this kind of stuff, to be honest. But um, this stuff is out there. It kind of reminds me of Stife uh, stuff. So uh, definitely look out, out for this thing for sure. Um, this little dog sold for $139, so definitely look out for this brand, Lindsay. Next up, we have this George Jetson. It's like George Jetson. <laughs> George Jetson. Uh, his son, Alroy, his daughter, Judy, and Jane, his wife. Uh, Sterling Silver Salt and Pepper Shakers. These are vintage. Uh, well, no vintage. These are antique, excuse me. As you can see here, uh, pretty old. Um some of this stuff, this brand, this this George J Jensen stuff sells for crazy, crazy money. Uh, anyways, we took a best offer for this for $145. And that, uh, for the condition of these, that's pretty much um, what they were going to be going for anyways. So uh, definitely look out for, it says right here, George Jensen, Washington, USA. Next up, we have this Franklin Mint Marilyn Monroe Porcelain Portrait. This is kind of like a doll. Um, I think they made these in the early, I want to say either the late um, 1990s or the early 2000s. As you can see here, really intricate kind of porcelain doll. Now, these things break very easily, so if you're ever going to ship these, just be very careful if you don't have the box uh, to ship it properly and carefully because sometimes these things break and they're very... Uh, so basically, it's like a porcelain doll with uh, fabric clothes. And some of these go for a pretty good amount of money. Um, not all the Franklin Mint dolls do that, but some of them actually go for pretty good money. Um, this one sold for a total of $159, so take a look out for this. Uh, speaking of Franklin Mint, Marilyn Monroe, we had another doll, as we can see here. This was uh, called Always Marilyn uh, Gold Dress. I don't know what the heck was in her hand. Uh, it, to me, it looked like maybe like a perfume bottle or something. Actually, that's probably what it is. At first, I thought it was like a shard of, <laughs> a shard of glass, but it's actually just a protective plastic thing. Um, to protect that bottle of perfume. And I, th I thought this face kind of looked a little freaky, to be honest, but whatever. You know, these are what they are. Uh, anyways, this one sold for a total of $164. So keep an eye out for Marilyn Monroe, Franklin Mint, uh, Porcelain Dolls. Uh, next up, we have this Hotel uh, Splendid, Splendid Ludwig B. Bielemans. Jeez, this, this one was a whole mouthful. Uh, signed book, as you can see here, it's a book. Always look inside books to see if they're signed. I've never heard of this author. I don't know anything about this guy, but uh, his signature demanded some good money. It was a limited edition copy. And I've talked about like kind of opening up books and always looking for signatures. And if you can find them, just buy them, especially if they're uh, the price is right, especially if you don't know anything about the author or anything. Usually the older, the better. Um, sometimes you can you know hit a home run with some of these older books uh, that are that are personally signed uh, this book sold for a hundred and sixty nine dollars uh, next up oh, this is a really cool one this is a singer seven spoke model this is a toy uh, sewing kit from I want to say the 60s um, as we can see here it had actually its box which is cool the box is kind of falling apart but um, as we can see here we can take a little bit of a closer look at this thing and uh, had some kind of different little pieces and things like that. The instruction book. The thing was really clean. I think that's what sold it uh, really well. You know, these things go for about $100, but this one went for a little bit more because of how clean it was. 
you know, the box and everything is in bad shape, but the, the but the actual unit itself was in amazing, amazing condition, especially for the age. Uh, this sold for a total of $171. I've seen similar ones that were beat up, sell anywhere between, you know, $80 to $100. So a uh, pretty good, pretty good price and sale uh, for this one. Uh, here's a kind of a, a bolo frame. Um, we've talked about uh, some of the other frames in the past, and I forget exactly what some of those other names were off the top of my head, but uh, there are some some frames that go for really crazy money. I mean, you know, crazy money is if in you know in the you know in the high fifties, the hundreds, and you know under two hundred dollars. You know, that for a frame, that's actually pretty crazy because you can find that stuff at estate sales and not even realize it because some of the frames are actually worth uh, good money, and even with even with like big art, some of the frames are worth more than the art, believe it or not. Anyways, this is from Lubjik. This is like out of France, uh, Python Snake kind of a thing. You can usually tell a good frame by if you look in the back and see how well it's put together. This thing is amazing. Really high quality, as you can see here. And uh, it's like a snake python skin. As you can see, this is a better, better photo of this. Uh, this sold for a total of $173. And there was two of them. There was a silver one too. And I think the silver one is in this grouping or actually it might not be it might be in the next uh, grouping if we do another video because this is basically from the first of the month to the 15th of the month so i think i sold that one actually after there's a silver one of this type uh, next up is this poly pocket wizard of oz this blew me away how much this actual thing went for um there was a lot going for it you know it had all the pieces that was one thing that was nice because i guess like some of the pieces of the little figures i should say uh, sell for a pretty good amount of money by themselves. The th the the place that itself was like in in pretty much like near mint condition. Very little use wear. It was pretty much near mint, as you can see here. Uh, this sold for a total of a hundred and seventy three dollars. So keep an eye out for anything Poly Pocket. We've talked about Poly Pocket in the past, especially sealed Poly Pocket. Some of that stuff goes into the way crazy hundreds of dollars, especially if you can buy collections at estate sales and stuff. Some people don't think that this stuff is worth anything, but it is. Uh, next up, we have this Louis Vuitton. This is a vintage bucket drawstring bag. Um, as you can see here, it does have some wear and tear to it, um, but is it is an authentic Louis. Um, really, really nice uh, wear. Uh, some people actually like to buy these and restore these, and they and you know they do all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, that sounds like a fun project for me um, if I was into that kind of stuff uh, to take some old stuff like this and and make it new. Again, especially if they're authentic stuff, because you're basically just, you know, improving on it, If it's especially if it's beat up. Um, this sold for a total of $180. So I think this is actually a really good deal uh, from the buyer, whoever got this. It's a really good deal. Uh, and you can actually check out some of our deals. I'll leave a link to our um, charity shop down below to the American Cancer Society. Uh, definitely please go and check out some of our items and send me a best offer, and we can see what we can do for you. Next up, we have this Maddie Land, um, Madeline Smith handmade wood base bronze. I got all the keywords in here from the Philippines. And that's what the logo looks like. Um, I was very surprised how much this box went because I, I get a lot of trinket boxes in from time to time. And this uh, this Madeline Smith brand is is it's pretty high quality as far as trinket boxes. But, um, you know, this thing went for a crazy amount of money. You should see some of the other ones. Uh, so if you're not busy and you want something to look up and something to research you probably don't know about, definitely look this stuff up. It's crazy money. Um, anyways, this sold for $182, which is pretty crazy for a little trinket box like this. Uh, next up, we have this vintage 14 karat gold. This is a ring from Macy's, uh, size 8, 2 grams, as we can see here. Uh, gold has been selling very well. Gold has reached all-time highs this year, so, um, you know... Just people are buying this stuff for scrap. You know, a lot of the jewelry stuff isn't being sold for jewelry, for fashion jewelry. It's being sold for uh, usually melt and scrap in any way. Anyways, uh, this sold for um, a total of $200. So we did take a best offer on that. And uh, like I said, just look out for gold. This stuff sells really fast, especially silver and gold. It's, it's like one of the fastest sellers uh, we have. As soon as it's listed, we got best offers and, and um, you know, stuff like that. Uh, next up, speaking of another ring, this is a a ring that we got here. It's a it's a half of a carat diamond, and really nice ring. You know, someone will probably melt this ring down and then reuse the diamond. Um, I'm not sh completely sure how much diamond values are because I know there's a whole like the cut, the clarity, and all that kind of stuff that has to do with the prices and the values of diamonds. It's almost like ba uh, grading baseball cards. 
it's a very it's it parallels the same as as grading cards you know if if you have a flawless diamond with you know really good clarity it's like way more expensive than whatever but anyways um more gold selling more gold this sold for two hundred and twenty seven dollars we did take a best offer on this uh so keep an eye out for those rings and trinkets and things when you're in the state sales and the garage sales sometimes this gets thrown in the junk jewelry drawers. Uh, next up, we have this uh, 2016 Pete McKee. This is a Coachella print. It is signed. I didn't want to take it out of the plastic because it was so nice the way it was in here. Um, I was very surprised how much this sold for because we did do the high-low theory on this. And for those that don't know, price high, you can always bring the price down. You price too low, it sells instantly. You don't know if you can actually get that much for it. Uh, I thought, you know, that there was no copies of this anywhere on online. And it was out of 100 so I thought $299 would, would work, you know, and after a few days it did sell for that exactly. So could we have got more for this? We'll never know. Um, but it to me, $300 seemed pretty high for what I was listing this for, especially this artist isn't very well known, this McKee. And so anyways, uh, pretty good sale. I would say this sold for uh, $299 straight up. Um, shipping this was, a, you know, quite interesting. We I have a video on that if you ever want to search my um, my videos on shipping art. Uh, this shipped in a TV box, <laughs> by the way. It's pretty funny. Uh, next up, we have another Louis Vuitton. This is from 2008. This is a handbag. And um, I kind of actually screwed this little photo up here with uh, trying to trying to make it all fancy. Uh, anyways, um, really nice bag. As you can see here, another authentic bag. And it comes with a dust bong. Oh, by the way, um, Louis Vuittons will have these little numbers. And they're called, they're, I think they're called date numbers. And if you search... There's a website, and I think it's like Louis, Louis, Louis v Codes com or something like that. If you just go to Google and you search Louis Vuitton codes, it's the first website that comes up. And you can actually put in that number, and it will actually tell you um, the month, the year, and the location of where the bag was manufactured. And how you can tell if that's off, like this, this one, what was this one, France? Yeah, so this one said France in like, I don't know, it was... September of 2008. Actually, I think I have it down here because I did look it up. Uh, yeah, so the 38th week of 2008 in France. Sometimes when you see those codes and they don't match, they're not going to match with the tag over here because um, Louis Vuitton, they do make some of their stuff in uh, other countries. So sometimes it'll say another country and then the, if the tag doesn't match, then you know you got a fake and uh, that happens from time to time. The fakes are actually, I've seen some crazy, crazy good fakes uh, over the last two years working uh, for the American Cancer Society. I can tell you, man, there's some crazy good fakes out there. And so just uh, be warned if you're ever going to get into this kind of stuff. Uh, next up, we have this Ben Bridge. This is a 14 karat gold necklace choker uh, with display box. Of course, gold selling very well because it's, you know, it did reach all time highs this year. People are getting this stuff for investment. Uh, purposes and uh, this did sell for uh, five hundred and thirty nine dollars so we did take a best offer on this so it was a pretty good sale uh, next up we also have this 18 karat gold and for those who don't know, know uh, the difference between 14 karat and 18 karat um, the higher the number the more gold that is in it so basically a 14 karat gold is going to be amalgam of different metals it could be silver it could be copper depending on the color um, you know white gold is going to have silver in it or platinum uh, usually it's not platinum, but usually it's like a lighter color or rose gold's going to have some copper uh, in it. And so that's where the colors come from. But anyways, 18 karat gold is a higher standard quality gold. Uh, these things also had diamonds in them, little tiny diamonds and um, pretty cool necklace. This sold for a total of $545. Uh, next up is this... Uh, IBM, these are solid gold cufflinks, and these are from 14 karat. These are actually a really cool piece of history here. As we can see, this was some kind of um, invention award. So whoever got this award for IBM, um, you know, these things were custom made for a particular award show or, or something like that, some sort of uh, invention award. And maybe they give it to away to someone that makes uh, a piece of software or a piece of hardware because, you know, that stuff happens in certain companies where... Uh, it, it was common practice back in the day when people were just inventing stuff left and right, where you'd come up with some software or some hardware, or you'd come up with something and the companies would buy it from you. Um, and then, of course, they'd make millions of dollars off your idea and they'd give you these cheap cufflinks. And then that was that. 
Uh, the, but these, these were uh, not cheap cufflinks for sure. These were some pretty nice ones. Uh, this sold for a total of $615. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Once again, I'm Chris the Thrift Shop Hustler. If you're not subscribed and you like this kind of content, please go down there, click the subscribe button, hit the bell for notifications, and we'll see you next time. Take care.